Let's take a look at what the inside of a vacuum pump looks like. Here we can see we have the oil level side of it. So our oil sight glass would be right here filled with oil. And this one has this really cool drain port at the bottom right here. So we don't need any tools. We can just simply unscrew this and allows the oil to drain out of the very, very bottom. As you can see that opens up and the oil would come straight out of the very bottom. Now this one a friend of mine gave to me, he dropped this, so it cracked it, so he gave it to me, but it was great to be able to open up to see what's happening on the inside. And here what I really wanna focus your attention on is the very bottom. Right all through here, all of that is rust. And here's what's interesting, this metal is made of aluminum, and aluminum does not rust. So all of this rust has to be coming from the pump action itself. What's happened was that they've left moisture inside of this pump, moisture rust out of the pump action, and that rust and the moisture settled down in the bottom and it embedded itself into this aluminum. Now I tried multiple times cleaning this and it just would not get the rust to come out because it's embedded with that aluminum. And then I realized I should just leave it because this is a great teaching example. And over here at the top side, we can see the oil fill glass. And down here at the bottom where all the moisture would collect, you wouldn't even see that it was dirty. So that's an important thing. Even though your oil may look clean at the top, down here at the bottom, that's where all your damage is gonna be happening. I already got some of these screws loose, so we'll take this open so we can see what's happening inside. And this is our vein style pump. So it's a rotary pump, but it's a vein. These are the little veins that move back and forth. So you can see here. Now as this spins really fast, these sling out to the outside. And this is what's so important, that oil makes this lubrication all through here and makes the seal where this vein is touching the outside wall. It's also making the seal here and also there. So if we get moisture inside of this oil, it breaks the seal. And so then the high pressure on one side ends up bleeding back across over here to the low side and our pump doesn't pull down fast enough. But you can see here, this spins around and as this chamber gets smaller, it pushes it out, and at the very, very top up here, we have a little reed valve. And what it does is it simply opens, and this little piece here opens and allows it to exhaust. And as this makes its complete cycle, it then goes back to a large chamber again, and then it starts squeezing that down as it rotates. So you can see here this large chamber, and it just keeps rotating back around and around and around. So that's only one of the stages of this pump. What we're gonna do is pull this off, You can see that cylinder wall and all the little wear that's on there from the improper lubrication or lack of lubrication, that's all those grooves. Now this is the steel, this is the metal that ends up rusting and there's a lot of rust on this and this metal rusted down and what embedded into the aluminum. And here at the top side, you can see the little valve, the little reed valve action and you can see the exhaust port right here to where it exhausts out. So when it squeezes right there, it exhausts through that little chamber and exhaust right on out through this little bitty reed valve right here. So here we can see the guts inside. This is that very end plate in this side. Here is the side of this, and here is these little veins. These are the ones that can spin out as the centrifugal force is happening. These are sliding out, and these are curved on the edge right here, and that curve is very important so that it makes proper contact with the outside of this pump. So that oil is essential for the metal not to be grinding, for us to not have moisture in there, for it wearing out, and for that seal. I can't stress that enough. What's really interesting also is if we look behind this vein, we see that there's another chamber back there. That chamber is really cool because that's what makes this a two-stage pump. So this is slinging around. We have another set of these back in this chamber here. Let's see if we can get to it. We'll pull the back side out. This is where the motor would hook up to. And we'll open this up. And here you can see this little chamber right here connects right here. So this is where our hose would hook up to. So it goes down into this chamber. From that chamber, this would hook up just like so. So it's going through this chamber. And then it connects right inside this pump, this inside right here. And you can see how this pump is much, much larger than the other one. So it's a two-stage pump, and actually it's going to be pumping from one side back into the other. So as we pull this apart, we can get a better look at it. 
and we'll pull these out and let's compare them. So if we look at it from this angle, we can really see the breakdown. Notice how large this chamber is. This one's much, much wider right here. The second one is a whole lot smaller. It's a very small chamber. Now they both have exhaust ports on it. What's really cool about this is this is a two-stage pump. So when I really want to pull down to a deep vacuum to reduce our compression ratio, we're able to pull into one chamber, exhaust from that chamber through this little plate here into the second chamber then this is able to pull it down a much lower vacuum. So being a two-stage pump, we have two different stages. So just like a compression ratio, we talked about going from a higher pressure down to a lower pressure, this is less work on the pump. The other thing about that's important to notice is we're gonna have what we call a gassed ballast. And this gas ballast is gonna allow us to separate it from being a two-stage pump into only a single-stage pump. It's gonna pull down faster, but not nearly as low. So in most every single one that we work with, you'll see a little connection like this that says gas ballast. And if we first start our vacuum out, what we'll do is unscrew this gas ballast. And by unscrewing this gas ballast, it'll allow some air to come into this chamber and that's piped down inside of our pump over here. And that comes in through one of these other ports and it basically separates these two chambers up. By doing that, we're only using one chamber so we're pulling that a whole lot faster, but not nearly as deep. Then once we get down to about 1,000, anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 microns, then we'll go ahead and close that gas ballast and that allows us to pump from one chamber back into the other. The other cool thing about using this gas ballast port here is it allows us to bypass a lot of the moisture out of the oil. Instead of all of that moisture going through the oil, we're able to push more of that moisture out and it allows our oil to last a little bit longer. So it's a pretty cool little option. Now, not all vacuum pumps have that, but most two-stage pumps will have that because of that gas ballast. And really, it's just breaking down these two chambers. So here's chamber number one. It's a very large chamber. And then once we reduce that pressure, it then goes into chamber number two, which is much smaller, but that takes it from, let's say it takes us from say 10 PSI absolute down to zero PSI absolute or whatever number that might be. So it allows us to pull down to that lower end. But if you notice, this one's a whole lot smaller. This one's a whole lot thicker, but still there's just a lot of rust built up on here. And that's just really poor maintenance of this pump. Also, if we look inside of this pump, we can see these little grooves inside of here. And these grooves are just more signs of wear to where this pump was being abused. So it's just a shame that this really beautiful, high quality pump, it's a really good brand of pump, was abused because of lack of oil change. So again, I just can't stress enough, changing the oil not only makes your vacuum pump work faster, it also makes your vacuum pump last a lot longer. Now your company should be paying for vacuum pump oil and that's also supposed to be charged to the job. So it's not coming out of the company's pocket, it's not coming out of your pocket, it's essentially charged to the customer.